BlackRock is public enemy number one. The entire world went from completely oblivious to their existence to a die-hard opponent to them over the course of literally just a couple of years. Now, every single person watching this video knows exactly who BlackRock are, they know exactly what they do, and they know exactly why it's wrong, and this has created an existential crisis for BlackRock. They simply cannot survive as a business with such god-awful public relations because their business at the end of the day caters to normal, ordinary, hard-working people, the very same people who deeply resent everything BlackRock is. And luckily for us, and unfortunately for BlackRock, things only seem to be getting worse for them. The time bomb is ticking, BlackRock's ESG scam has been well and truly exposed, and they know it now as well. Over the last couple of weeks, drastic developments have come to fruition, showing us just how late stage this party is, and BlackRock's collapse is truly well upon us right now. Over the next few minutes, I'm going to explain to you everything, exactly how BlackRock found themselves in this position today, and just how bad things really are for them, so stay tuned. Now, BlackRock started off simply as an asset manager, a company that would hold your money for you and put it into an ETF to make it as simple as possible for you to invest, and at first, it really wasn't anything sinister or evil. But as they grew, they saw their influence grow too, and they realized the best way to cement their position in corporate America was to cement their influence over the government and the corporations which their customers invest into. Now, this really isn't a new idea, and BlackRock wasn't the first business to pursue this idea. Goldman Sachs used to run this exact same principle, dominated government in the US, to the point where they ended up being nicknamed Government Sacks. Every advisor to a US president, a senator, congressman, or even a governor had a 50-50 chance of being an ex or a future Goldman Sachs employee, and that gave the business ridiculous levels of control over the country, its governance, and it even allowed them to basically rig the financial system in their favor. Now, BlackRock saw this happen, and they decided that Goldman shouldn't have all the fun alone, and the BlackRock ought to be the real ones in charge, so they pursued that exact same strategy and littered the US government with BlackRock employees who were loyal to the greatest paycheck, which obviously came from them and not from any taxpayer. Now, this alone has led to corruption like you wouldn't even believe, and profits out of this world as well for the institution. Is it any surprise that BlackRock have been selected by Biden to run the loaning systems to rebuild Ukraine when the president's senior advisor on issues pertaining to Russia and Ukraine is an ex-BlackRock executive. But BlackRock took things a step further than even that. They realized that there was another tool they could use to seize control, and they called it ESG, Environmental, Societal, and Governance. The truth is, you already know what I'm talking about. And in theory, this would essentially be just a ranking system to determine how moral and good a company is, and that would help consumers decide if they wanted to invest into that company. Maybe a factory pollutes the local river. Well, ordinary people who put money into stocks and shares for their retirement probably don't like that. So in theory, the ESG score of that factory would be reflected by that act, and investors could choose whether or not they wanted to stay away from that business. But BlackRock is a business focused on ETFs above all else, which means that those who invest with BlackRock rarely buy anything individual at all. Instead of buying shares in a single company, they buy shares in the entire ETF, and so individual ESG scores are entirely irrelevant to these actual BlackRock customers or investors. And so what does BlackRock do to solve this issue then? Well, they take a look at the ESG ratings themselves, and then they make a decision on behalf of their customers as to whether or not that business has a good enough rating to make it into that ETF. And again, on the surface, this isn't actually too awful an idea. But when you realize that BlackRock is the company that gives these investments their ESG ratings, and they're the ones who decide whether or not those ESG ratings matter, and suddenly the conflict of interest becomes abundantly clear. BlackRock is in the miraculous position of being able to determine whether or not any publicly traded company in America has access to around 50% of every single invested dollar in the entire economy. Essentially, BlackRock decides whether or not businesses can get investment and they use this reality to further their control and influence over the economy, over the country and even over the world. Because say a factory does happen to pollute that local river, that's not necessarily a problem because BlackRock can simply choose to turn a blind eye 
providing a certain fat envelope is posted through the correct mailbox one morning. And of course, this doesn't all have to be based on something so real like polluting a river, because the S in ESG is literally just someone's opinion. If a business chooses to ignore race entirely when hiring people to take a look at the candidates entirely based on their merits with no names or in-person interactions to get in the way, BlackRock are the ones who get to choose whether that's a good thing or whether it's a very, very bad thing. BlackRock are the ones who get to decide if a company forcing its entire workforce to go vegan while at the office is a defiant act of fighting back against climate change or an authoritarian woke fest where a company is overstepping their bounds. Every single business in the world suddenly became terrified that BlackRock would simply check the wrong box or interpret a simple procedure a little excitedly and suddenly access to capital drives up and for many businesses, that literally results in bankruptcy altogether. BlackRock's corrupt ESG ratings has seen oil companies hailed as the greenest of them all. It's seen Tesla attacked as a root cause of climate change. It's seen Twitter bombarded as the newest incarnation of the Third Reich. It's seen racist universities rated as socially just and the FTX crypto scam rated as well governed. And while this ESG scam did survive for many years and while it did capture countless institutions and nigh on shape the entire economy in the late teens and early 2020s, it has now been rightly and justly exposed as corruption and things are finally starting to change. And for us, that is very, very good news. But for BlackRock, that's as close to an existential crisis as we've ever seen before, and this business is now deathly on the brink of collapse as it tries to navigate this new post-ESG BlackRock detesting world. So we know how BlackRock got to this point, but what exactly is happening right now? Well, put simply, people are fighting back. And not just normal people, but powerful people as well. Of course, public opinion is nothing to turn your nose up against. That alone has the ability to influence the operation of nearly everything in this day and age. And that's 100% the case with BlackRock as well. Just a year ago, BlackRock was forced to publish a press release announcing that they aren't going to be buying up any more single family homes in America because of the backlash they saw from ordinary people. And while that response from BlackRock was categorically nonsense and frankly bullshit, it does show us just how influential public opinion can be. And take a look at any social media website these days and the narrative surrounding BlackRock is 100% negative. Whether you are left or right, socialist or capitalist, everyone hates BlackRock and ESG is a founding reason why. And in political terms, BlackRock is now officially being sued by the state of Tennessee as of December the 18th, just a couple of weeks ago. The state is accusing BlackRock of misusing the ESG factors from its investment strategy in what basically amounts to fraud. The state attorney general for Tennessee is stating that essentially BlackRock has manipulated the ESG rankings and its use of them to make themselves rich at the expense of their customers as well. He actually said, and I quote, for years, BlackRock has misled consumers about the scope and effects of its widespread ESG activity. And government officials in Texas, Florida, and South Carolina have chosen to pull their investment assets off of BlackRock after the firm essentially tried to boycott fossil fuel companies altogether. And this has all proven to become quite a serious problem for BlackRock, to the point where they turned around this week and decided to fire 600 of their ESG staff which amounts to almost 3% of their entire business. It's no surprise that the staff has been axed, as ESG isn't an asset for BlackRock anymore, it's just a drain on their public relations, and it actively damages their business every single day. And Larry Fink, the founder and CEO of BlackRock, has announced that he won't even say the letters ESG anymore because of how much negative press it drives for him. And of course, some people will say this is all smoke and mirrors because BlackRock's share price rose by 6% over the course of 2023. But we need to remember that that is after it fell more than 43% from its highs. And that's as the rest of the market rose by more than 20% over the same time period. And of course, I know still, even after all the evidence we've seen, people will still claim that this is all just a conspiracy theory and BlackRock would never want to force us to behave in a certain way. Well, for those people, I have a very special video for you right here from Larry Fink, the founder and CEO himself. Behaviors are going to have to change. And this is one thing we're, going to, we're asking companies. Uh, you have to force behaviors. And at BlackRock, we are forcing behaviors. What we are doing internally is if you don't achieve these levels of impact, it, your compensation could be impacted, okay? You have to force behaviors. 
And if you don't force behaviors, whether it's gender or race or just any way you want to say the composition of your team, you're going to be impacted. The truth is that for years, BlackRock really did control more of our society than any other company in history. But over the last two years, things have seriously changed. And this firm is now a dinosaur that is being attacked vehemently by multiple meteors. The company is clinging on right now because it's a pain for their current customers to move all their assets and retirement funds over to other providers. But we are starting to enter a great transition of wealth as boomers who currently dominate the investment market sadly are getting older and will continue to essentially die out. And that wealth that they've built up, which is what BlackRock has been built off of, will be handed down the generations to the millennials and even Gen Zs who are the mortal enemies of BlackRock. The generation which can't afford to buy a house has a boogeyman to blame and it's BlackRock, and so if that corrupt, awful firm thinks for even one second that it will be able to retain these customers, it is sorely mistaken. BlackRock flew too close to the sun, and as a result of that, its time as hegemon of the investment landscape is well and truly over, and we are now lucky enough to be watching the slow but steady collapse of the company that used to own the entire world, and I personally am damn pleased to be saying that to you on this video right now.